The auto adjustment in Camera Raw has recently been updated, this time to provide better tone and colour corrections. This has been achieved through Adobe working with a number of top professional photographers who were each asked to analyse many hundreds of images in order to build up a reference of how expert photographers adjust their photographs in Camera Raw or Lightroom. The result of that research is the new auto settings, which has used artificial intelligence and machine learning, based on the research I just mentioned, to provide improved auto tone and colour settings results. So let's get started with this image here where at the moment the basic panel sliders are all set to the default settings. When I click on Auto, this applies the new Artificial Intelligence, or simply AI, Auto adjustment, which to my mind looks pretty good as it is, and doesn't need much further tweaking. And you'll notice that as well as adjusting these sliders here, the Exposure, Contrast, Highlights, Shadows, Whites and Black sliders, it also adjusts the vibrance and saturation sliders too. This is why it's now properly referred to as an auto settings adjustment, because it now adjusts both the tone and colour. It's more than just an auto tone adjustment now. Now let's compare this with the legacy auto tone. If I go to the snapshots panel, I can select the pre save legacy auto setting, and you can see that with the legacy auto, the auto tone adjustment is different. To start with, it hasn't darkened the exposure anything like as much as with the AI auto settings. It's boosted the contrast rather than softened it and made no attempt to recover either the highlight or the shadow detail. And down here there is no vibrance or saturation adjustment. If I compare now with the previous AI auto settings adjustment and toggle between the two, you can see what a difference there is between the old and the new auto methods. Now let's take a look at the other images I have selected here in the film strip. Here you can see the AI auto version, and here the previous legacy auto version. And if I now toggle between the two, you can see that with the new AI auto, the image isn't lightened as much, and there is more attempt to recover detail in the mid-tone to highlight regions. And also, the new AI auto boosts the vibrance and saturation, which brings out more colour in the bluebells. I'll select this image next, and again click on Auto. Now here, the AI Auto has quite a dramatic effect on the image appearance. It both darkens but expands the tonal range to add more contrast. This is mostly achieved through the aggressive black slider adjustment. If I compare with the Legacy version, you can see that the Legacy Auto version is not too different from the default starting point. And I think this is again due to the fact that the old auto just doesn't darken the image as much as it should. Of course, I might want to use the new AI auto setting as a starting point and then fine tune the sliders to get the desired look. And then let's look at this image. I'll click Auto. Here you can see the AI auto version. If I come over here to the snapshots menu and select the pre save legacy auto setting, and let me toggle between the two again. I would say that here I prefer the new AI auto look. The sky is around the same tone as it was with the default settings version, except the overall image now has more contrast and richer colours. I kind of prefer it, I think. And now let's look at these photos which I shot in Venice last year. Using the AI auto, it has done a good job of preserving the highlight detail on the walls of this building, and you'll notice that lightening the shadows adjustment hasn't over lightened the shadows here. So let's now compare with the legacy auto version. As you can see, no attempt has been made to preserve the bright highlight area detail, and so I would say I prefer the new auto here as a suitable starting point. With this image, the new AI auto doesn't make a huge difference, and it doesn't change the appearance too much. However, if I compare with the Legacy Auto, this hasn't really darkened the image enough and I would need to do more tweaking to get the tones adjusted correctly. Then with this image of the Grand Canal, the AI Auto again doesn't make too big a difference, but it does get the tone and colour settings just about right though. Compare with the Legacy Auto, and once again I would say that this auto setting is too light and doesn't do anything to protect the delicate highlight tones. 
Just to explain a little bit more about how the new AI auto settings work, I mentioned already how the auto tone decisions made here are based on extensive research looking at how pro photographers edit their photos. The computer process data looking at how those ed edits were applied has been condensed down to compact reference data within Camera Raw that does the calculations seen here. The point here is that to use the new auto you don't have to have a live internet connection unlike say when using the AI search command in Lightroom CC Mobile which does. To finish let me show you an adjustment where additional steps may be required when making an auto adjustment. For example when you apply an AI auto settings adjustment it is crop aware so when a crop is applied the auto analysis is based on the cropped areas only. With this image, if I click on the Auto button, it applies an auto adjustment that takes into account the large areas of black in this scene, which Camera Raw therefore compensates for in making that adjustment. If I now compare that with the Legacy Auto version, you can see that here too the Legacy Auto isn't much different, although a little lighter again in the highlight detail. And this adjustment has basically taken into account this large dark area here and compensated accordingly to lighten the dark background. So to get around this I can select the crop tool and choose to crop the image where I'll apply a tight crop around the middle bust so that most of the cropped image is taken up by the bust and we see less of the dark backdrop. If I then click the auto button this applies a revised AI auto setting that takes into account the applied crop. And as I change the crop slightly and click Auto again, I'll get a different result. All I need to do now is to come back to the Crop Tool menu and select Clear Crop to remove that crop. Here now then is the modified auto version, and if I compare with the Legacy Auto and toggle between the two, you can see what an improvement that makes. Well, that brings me to the end of this introduction of working with the new auto settings in Camera Raw. Thank you for watching. And this video was brought to you by me, Martin Evening, author of the Adobe Photoshop CC for Photographers book series. To find out more about the book and access video tutorials, plus other content related to Photoshop, please visit the book website.